Hey everyone, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel. Taking a look at today in Major League Baseball. What's happening, Jim? I am pretty excited, Greg, because we have good pitching options for today, both the upper range and the lower range, which means we can stack Coors Field without getting dumb, and we can potentially stack Coors Field while still using Garrett Cole. So it's a pretty interesting slate to maybe get a little bit creative and have some fun. So I'm pretty pumped. How are you doing today? I'm feeling good, man. To be able to stack Coors Field and not be dumb, what else can you ask for? The answer, Garrett Cole. And that's how we begin our lineups today, going with the Yankees. Ace the Yankees' hottest team in baseball. And Garrett Cole, uh, their only pitcher that's actually any good. Garrett Cole in your lineup today. I don't really need to ask how it comes because it's Garrett Cole. But how are we affording it? That is a great question, Greg, and we will definitely be getting to that later on because, like, I think there's sneakily a decent amount of value on this slate. The problem is they all play the same position. Everyone is catcher slash first base, so we might have to get a little bit creative, but I think that it's worth it to get creative to get Garrett Cole in there because, yeah, you can look at his numbers so far this year, and maybe you're not super excited. His swinging strike rate is under 12%. That's not what you expect. The velocity down a tick, but it's not enough to scare me by any means, and this is a better strikeout matchup than he has had in his first two starts this year. His first two starts came against the Nationals and the Orioles. Those two teams ranked 7th and 8th respectively based on their active rosters uh, in strikeout rate against righties since the start of last year, whereas the Phillies are down to 19th. It's not a huge strikeout team, but a better strikeout matchup than what he's had in his first two starts so far this year. And I think that's a good thing for Garrett Cole, $11,000. And I think that if you think about Garrett Cole, if you think about him being his normal self, $11,000 is really enticing. Then you add on the fact that the Phillies have been off for about a week. They may not have their bats, you know, really timed up, especially for a guy who's pumping out the heat that Garrett Cole has. So I think this is a good spot to try to get Garrett Cole. It may force you to be creative, maybe some 4-2-2 two, two compositions, a four-player stack with two two-player stacks. Usually I try to get two four-player stacks when I can, but I might bend those rules a bit tonight to get to Garrett Cole. I think he's worth it, Greg, even if you have to get a little bit creative earlier on. $11,000, lower than it should be, I think, and a good matchup for Cole tonight. So very worth that lofty salary, even forces to change us our nor change our norms from a hitter perspective. This one just doesn't seem fair because you have a Garrett Cole and a Yankee team, like I said, it's the hottest team in baseball, facing the Phillies team that just haven't played in a week. And it's not even just haven't played, right? Haven't been wor- haven't worked out. They've been pretty much trapped for the most part for a week. And now you got to go face Garrett Cole. Seems like a bit of a mismatch. And you're right. To break your usual norms, to make sure you get Garrett Cole in the lineup tonight, it's going to be worth it, especially at this price, around $11,000. But if you don't want to go all the way up to Garrett Cole, you want to save some money and really stack uh, the Colorado Rockies or that game in Coors Field, you can get a bit cheaper. And you go with Frankie Montas of the Oakland Athletics. Montas is $7,700 tonight on FanDuel. Why is he the next best option, the more reasonable option than Garrett Cole? Yeah, I think that Montas, like we're straining ourselves to like get to Garrett Cole, but like you can just take the easy route and go Montas. There's no reason not to. He's really good too. I think that the reason that I, I am trying to get to Cole is that there is one decently major concern with Montas and that is a pitch count because the A's have been very quick with the hook so far this year and that's been true for Montas too despite the fact that he is probably easily their best pitcher he went 81 pitches his first start that's a really good number relative to a lot of pitchers in their first outings but then got yanked after 77 in his second outing that's the concern is that you know the A's they've got depth Daniel Mengden is back in the bullpen now they've got arms who can give them innings. They don't need their starters to go six, seven, eight innings. So they could take Montas out after five or so. You could lose that quality start, potentially lose that win too. That's why the salary is lower. Outside of that, though, Montas really does check every box. He is facing the Mariners, a high strikeout team, and Montas hasn't had a lot of high strikeout opponents recently. He has made 12 starts since uh, increasing his sinker usage. So his most relevant sample is his past 12 starts. In that sample, a 28% strikeout rate, really good number. But those 12 starts, six of them, or or four of them, have come against the Angels, who are a low strikeout team. One is against the Pirates, another team in the top five in strikeout rate against righties. And two more were against Cleveland. They are 11th in strikeout rate against righties. So when you put those opponents on the dock, you would expect Montas' strikeout rate to be a whole heck of a a lot lower than 28%. 
But I think that when you give me a 28% number and give me all those opponents, I'm expecting that strikeout rate to go up as the sample expands for Montas. So I think that's really intriguing here, especially against the high strikeout Mariners team. So yeah, there is that risk with the pitch count with Frankie Montas. Maybe the A's will continue to be a little bit frustrating and take him out a bit early. But even with that being the case, I still think he's worth it. I think that he's decently safe, despite that pitch count concern. Really good matchup and a great pitcher. So I am okay taking the discount, going down to Montas, and just loading up on those bats in Coors Field. Like you were saying, Montas is also a really good pitcher. And maybe the matchups haven't dictated how good of a pitcher he is. He's not striking as many guys out. The concern, like you mentioned, only around 80 pitches in both of his starts. It's clear that's what Oakland is looking for. But tonight, you're not looking at the pitch count. You're more concerned with the matchup, and for good reason, because he's in a great spot. You don't want to go up for Garrett Cole? Choose Frankie Montas for a whole lot less. Up next, we move on to the hitter, and of course, that brings us to Coors Field, and it brings us to Trevor Story, who's not cheap tonight. He's $4,300, but when you mention Colorado and you want a little bit of everything, well, that means Trevor Story. You're willing to pay up for that tonight, Jim. Yeah, let me toss you a hypothetical, Greg. Like, if you are crafting a baseball player, a baseball hitter, you would want them to be like Trevor Story with fewer strikeouts. Like, you want the stolen bases, you want uh, in a play shortstop, you want the power, but you want a couple less strikeouts. You're kind of getting that so far this year. Story has struck out four times in 36 plate appearances, which is an 11% strikeout rate. And if you are anybody facing the Rockies, that has to be a terrifying proposition to give you the possibility that Trevor Story could cut down the strikeouts. Because if you do that, oh, buddy, things could get really nuts for Story. He's still stealing bases. He has two steals so far this year. Already four home runs. He has as many strikeouts as home runs. There was thir- first 36 plate appearances. Now you're having him face the Giants. I don't know the Giants are starting because the Giants are the Giants. Gabe Kapler wants to give us the double middle fingers because he feels like it. So it looks like Johnny Cueto, maybe Johnny Cueto, maybe someone else, maybe you, maybe me. I don't really know, but it's probably going to be a really good matchup for Trevor Story tonight at Coors Field. $4,300 is pricey relative to a lot of the hitters, but relative to where a story should be, I think he's underpriced still, despite the fact that he's $4,300. I think it's going to be a great matchup no matter what. It is a, a great park for hitting as always, and if you use Montas, it's really easy to get to story. So I am going to load up on Trevor Story shares. Well, I think that he is still underpriced before people realize that the strikeout rate may be coming down a hair for Trevor Story. This dude was already unreal, maybe getting even better. So give me all the Trevor story I can handle, no matter who the Giants start at pitcher. doesn't matter who the Giants start, certainly, because he'll be in there for an inning or two before Gabe Kapler, as you mentioned, gives us the double middle finger. Gabe Kapler, smarter than all of us, except his teams aren't usually very good. Trevor story, he is very good. He's the hitter that we've always wanted him to be, not striking out, but stealing bases and hitting home runs. Price doesn't matter tonight, especially if you go with Montas, as you mentioned, Jim. Story in Coors Field. That's the story that we need to write tonight. Let's move on to somebody that's a little bit cheaper, but also in Coors Field. That's Evan Longoria here. Third baseman, of course, for the Giants. And he's an old veteran, and nobody likes putting in old veterans into your fan to align up. So you, Jim, of course. Why do you like Longoria here tonight? It's a lot easier to use a veteran, Greg, when they are absolutely destroying baseballs. Uh, Longoria hasn't been off the injured list very long, but – Ever since he's come back, not a lot of strikeouts. It seems like he's seen the ball well and just crushing the baseball, which is good because the worry with the Giants outside of the starting pitcher is that they're very platoon heavy. So I like Alex Dickerson a lot. He's $3,200, but there was always that concern. Like if, if the Rockies bring out a lefty, you know Dickerson's leaving that game. He's done so in the fifth and the sixth inning a couple of times so far this year. Hunter Pence would probably come in. So that's a concern we have to keep in mind whenever we're stacking the Giants. I don't think that is a concern with Evan Longoria because of how good he is. I think that he and like Mike Yastrzemski may be two of the safest guys on this team, but Longoria especially as a righty, $3,300, crushing the ball to start this year. And honestly, last year, Wasn't all that bad either. Uh, Since the start of last year against righties, a 44% hard hit rate for Longoria against righties. So not that bad. Probably bad in cleanup for $3,300 at Coors Field in a matchup that I do like quite a bit. I think that it makes a lot of sense. Now, I want to load up on the Giants. The Giants are my top stack for tonight. I just have to do so while being mindful of the fact that some of those guys could leave for pinch hitters or defensive replacements later in the game. So make sure you dig into the game logs, take a look at different players, see if they left the game early for pinch hitters or defensive replacements. 
and be a bit more wary of players for whom that is the case. I don't think that'll be the case with Evan Longoria. So among the Giants, he is my number one guy for tonight on my favorite stack. So for $3,300, I know I'll have a lot of Evan Longoria on this slate. Gabe Kapler's crazy, man. He'll just take anybody out at any time. It doesn't matter the inning. It doesn't matter the guy. Unless it's Evan Longoria or probably Mike Yastrzemski. A guy that's going to back clean up for you at third base, just $3,300 in the Coors Field. Yeah, that all adds up. I get it. Longoria's also hit the ball really, really well since coming off the I.L. Longoria, it's not a sexy name, but as Jim mentioned, the Giants, the top stack on the board. But be careful. You want to be safe. Yastrzemski, get him in there. Longoria, get him in there. Everybody else, fingers crossed. Up next for us, Jim, we get to Edwin Encarnacion, a power hitter that's $2,900 tonight. Obviously, another veteran that you're putting in a lineup. More sexy, certainly, because he just hits bombs. Why are we expecting a bomb tonight? Yeah, I think my general rule of thumb with the White Sox here, Greg, is going to be I want to stack them whenever they're facing a low strikeout pitcher. And it doesn't get a lot more low strikeout than Brett Anderson. I started adding a cutter in last year, and he kept the ball on the ground because that's just what Brett Anderson does. But just an 11 or 12% strikeout rate over his past 24 starts. And against most teams, we probably wouldn't stack against him because that ground ball rate is so high for Brett Anderson. But with the White Sox, generally when they make contact, they can do some nasty things with it. They're currently fourth in the league in WRC Plus to open up 2020. If you look at what their active roster did last year, guys like Encarnacion and Yasmani Grandal, those are really big additions. And Luis Robert, the same thing. Those are really good hitters added to this team, and they are showing the dividends of that so far this year. Encarnacion, specifically a 55% fly ball rate against lefty since the start of last year. Probably going to bat fifth for $2,900. I like all of that. Now, and in this team, there is other value. Yasmani Grandal, revenge game, Greg, $2,500. It's Luis Robert's birthday as well. So double narrative game for the Chicago White Sox. What more could you possibly want? The only downside is that both Encarnacion and Grandal are catcher slash first base, as is Mitch Garver, who is next on the list. So all the value is right there, meaning we're going to lock up our catcher slash first base and our utility. But hey, if it saves us all this money, helps to get to Garrett Cole, I will take that lack of flexibility. Encarnacion, with his upside, very much worth the decreased flexibility for tonight's slate. I love the narratives, man. You give me a revenge game. You give me a birthday. You give me Ed E. And what you didn't even mention is Brett Anderson thought he was starting for like every day the last week, and he hasn't. So the White Sox are going to be ready. Brett Anderson, who knows where his head is at? Who knows where anyone in MLB's head is at? But the White Sox in a great spot tonight. I don't care that we're locking into positions. It's well worth it because we're going up to Garrett Cole. We're getting value. I love the White Sox stack. I love the Rockies and the Giants as well. We can never, ever leave here, Jim, without talking about Mitch Garver. Of course, Mitch Garver of your Minnesota Twins in a good spot tonight. Why do you like Mitch Garver? Greg, it's hard not to love $2,500 for a dude who hits taters like Mitch Garver does. And he's facing Derek Collin, who is more than willing to oblige in an occasional tater himself. And Mitch Garver, the perfect guy to supply them. Since he started last year against lefties, Mitch Garver has a 55% hard hit rate and a 52% fly ball rate. You could take both those numbers down by 20% or 10 percentage points. I'd still be ecstatic to use this guy for $2,500. And Garver may even hit leadoff for tonight for the Twins against, against Derek Collin. That is all awesome. That is why I am okay taking the decreased flexibility and locking up both my catcher slash first base and my utility slot to get guys like Randall, Garver, Encarnacion, even Miguel Sano is $3,100, the same position. All those guys are worth the decreased flexibility because the upside in them is so good and all of them will have the platoon advantage tonight as well. Josh Donaldson is $2,900. He's missed the past couple of games. He's been banged up. But if he gets back out there, good salary for him as well. The problem is he is the same position as, as uh, Evan Longoria. So we're running into a lot of positional issues for tonight, Greg. So what I'd say is check out lineups once, once they're out. Try to find some guys who are not catcher slash first base eligible and plug them in because it could be a great slate to get to Cole and still stack the Giants. I think it's possible for tonight. A big key to getting there is Mitch Garver. Again, you're getting a lot of power, getting a good spot in the order, getting a great matchup against Derek Collins. So checking a lot of boxes, and it's going to make things tough and a really crowded position. But I think that Mitch Garver is the best value on the slate and someone I'm going to use aggressively, even at a loaded position. 
And if sir, $2,500 for Mitch Garver tonight, uh, a player that could bat lead off in a good lineup against Derek Holland. Like Jim said, Mitch Garver hits taters, whatever that is. Derek Holland allows taters, whatever that is. But to me, it's bombs away for Mitch Garver and the White Sox, twins as well. It's going to be a fun night around Major League Baseball. There you have it. That's going to do it for us here at the FanDuel Hurry. Jim, it's been a blast, man. Good luck tonight. Hopefully we get some blasts out of these guys, too. Should be a fun night, Greg. I will talk to you again on Friday. Looking forward to it. As long as there's baseball, you and I will be here. For Jim Sanas, I am Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for joining us tomorrow on the show. I'm joined by Davis Maddock as we take a look at the PGA Championship and how you are going to make some money. Have a great night. Enjoy the games. And we'll see you back here tomorrow.